How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Hey, what are some of the things you see in the uh, Carolina defense? They uh, got some uh, folks out there. Yeah. Uh, well, first and foremost, they get after it. Um, they've actually scored a bunch of points as a defense. Um, they've created a bunch of turnovers, gotten a lot of three and outs. Um, so again, I feel like I say it week in and week out. Um, it's a it's a tough challenge for us, and uh, we're looking forward to it. In that front, I guess you know we know Derek Brown grew up around the street down here. Does he flash off of you on the front line of that defense? No doubt, no doubt. Um, physical. Uh, again, he's got gifts, uh, especially for a guy that at his size, um, what he's capable of doing of controlling the line of scrimmage. Um, so for our guys up front, it's definitely going to be something that they have to be ready for. And on the second line, Shaq Thompson, how does he get mm -hmm. things organized over there? For He's a leader of that defense. Uh, he has been for a long time now. Um, Shaq and I go back for a long time. Right. Um, we played against each other in college. So um, looking forward to it again. I, I think he's a great player. He's been a great player in this league. Somebody that I feel like has been very underrated. Um, can play sideline to sideline. Does a great job covering as well. Um, so again, a uh, good player and somebody that we have to be ready for. And Chin, how do you see him and how they try to use him back there? Yeah, they move him around and put him in a lot of different places. Um, again, a guy that's kind of a ball hawk, um, finds ways to create turnovers, finds ways to uh, create interceptions. Um, so again, uh, like I said before, these, these guys are good. How is Arthur's offense different than it was 2018-19? Um, yeah, that's a great question. And I think for me, just seeing it now, uh, he does a great job of, you know, marrying a lot of things up, um, doing a lot of things, run and pass, that look the same, that, um, you know, I think looks the same to the defense that creates some matchups for us that, that are in our favor. Is there a, do you get in sync with him in, in his play calling in terms of, by that I mean, do you get, you find yourself thinking, okay, I kind of felt like this was coming, I felt like this was coming as they come into your headset, or does that, yeah, I would say so. On a play -by -play basis well, I try, to, I try to take it play-by-play, play, to be honest with you. Um, you know, I focus on what I got to do, what my job is on that specific play. Um, I try not to think about what's going on in the past or maybe what maybe he's trying to think about in the future. One, two, right. Yeah, I just try to stay focused on what I got to do. Marcus, question we've you know, asked you several times throughout the season, and I know that that's a really complicated answer, but why do you feel Kyle and Drake haven't been as involved as many people expected them to be? I think it just... Game plan, um, week to week, where we think we can take advantage of the defense. Um, no doubt, we got to get those guys the ball. We got to find ways to create opportunities for them. Um, but for us, whatever whatever way is going to help us win. Um, what's pretty cool about these guys is they're unselfish. They're willing to do anything. So whatever the coaches feel is, is best for this team, we're going to do. How much more intense does it feel going up against the pa Panthers with you guys tied for first right now with the Buccaneers in the division? I don't, you know, honestly, I don't try to think about anything other than winning this game and taking it one day at a time. Um, you know, it's a great challenge for us. It poses a lot of um, tough matchups. They, they got a great defense. Um, I try to not make it more than what it is. I try to focus on doing my job and making sure that we're going to go out there and execute. I know you've been, been talking about not getting too high, not getting too low after a loss or whatever, but uh, after Sunday, does that focus you at all? Does it sharpen just kind of the focus of the team and turn and practice? Well, I honestly, I think coming out here today, guys were flying around and doing what they had to do. Um, you know, unfortunately, you don't want to go through those laps to be able to get back into those mindsets. Um, but this is a young team. And, you know, you're going to go through some of those things. You're going to go through some of these growing pains. Um, so to learn from it, I think guys did. And, and we're going to be more than willing to just get back on track. Kind of going off of that a little bit, a lot of the things that Arthur says is how the team responds. He always looks for that response. How can you measure that other than just a win on Sunday? I think it starts with how we come about it in practice. Um, you know, guys can kind of feel sorry for themselves, play the victim card, which none of our guys did. Um, so that's a great step in the right direction. Um, obviously, to measure it, a win would be great. Um, but I think that was a great first step. Is there any more emphasis on it, given the fact that it's a divisional opponent on Sunday, or you're just looking at it like every other Sunday? <laughs> yeah, you try to focus on taking it one game at a time. Uh, we do understand that it is a division game, especially at home. Um, you know, you got to create. Um, somewhat of a lead in our division. You want to create separation. Um, this is where it starts. In your experience, how often, what percentage of the time does a ball go to the first read? Is it closer uh, to 85 or closer to 50? Um, I don't know. I mean, I think maybe it also kind of depends on the systems, too. Okay. Um, I can't give you a specific number, but um, it's probably more than 50, but less than 
80, okay. so somewhere, somewhere in between. I just yeah. would, I would not have any. <laughs> I was just going to say, does number. it depend on like the team and like how prepared they are? Like a less prepared team, maybe you can hit that rate, the first rate more than. Yeah, maybe so. Um, but also like when you're going it about a week to week, sometimes you're playing a defense that shows something completely different that you weren't expecting. So, you know, when you get out there, you're not really throwing the first read all the time. Um, so it, it obviously going to change week to week, um, but I can't really give a specific number on that. Are you expecting teams to start loading up on the run more, and are you surprised maybe that they haven't a ton so that the game plan has still stuck with the run as much as it has? Um, I would say so, but again, it, it's, it's going to really depend on what they think. Um, you know, I do believe that our matchups outside with Drake and Kyle and, and even like OZ and, and um, you know, B and these guys, it, it creates kind of matchup problems for them, so they mm -hmm. think about it. Um, so as of today, yeah, we'll see. Um, you know, I would love for them to load the box. I'd love to throw the ball a little more, but at the same time, it just kind of depends on what they want to do. How valuable is it for the team to have a guy like Avery Williams who can run the ball, but also if they needed him, they could also call him in to be DB for you guys? Yeah, I, I think his, his talents, his um, attributes for us is so, so important, so critical, because um, one, not only does he um, provide some kind of a safety net too, he can talk to our guys on offense about like, hey, you know, in this coverage, this is what they're expecting, this is the leverage they're going to play. Um, so he's, he's been such a great help on, on our side of the ball. But if he needs to be, he can go out there and play defense too. Give me a random question. Have you ever found yourself in the middle of one of these standing scrums where the offensive lineman and the defensive lineman are trying to push a ball carrier back and forth? Probably, yeah, through the course of my career. I would, I would feel like that would be something you'd remember. You'd stick in your <laughs> um, I, see, or maybe as a quarterback, you get down, and so it doesn't happen. You don't get caught up in that. Yeah, um, I think, but I think about it like even in high school or college, it might have happened. Um, it's more like you're just kind of riding the wave. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's like you're just kind of like. there. Yeah. Um, and just kind of letting whoever's pushing you the artist go that way, you know? Yeah, hey, Marcus, just going back to, you know, uh, your rookie year, what were the benefits of playing uh, as opposed to, you know, learning? Where, you know, I've seen it where, where different teams do it different ways. Desmond's learning apparently right now. Uh, what are the benefits, pros and cons of getting out there or, you know, sitting down and learning and trying to develop? Well, I, I think for me, um, I appreciate the fact that I got to experience it. Um, I got to experience everything firsthand. Mm -hmm. Got to see a lot of different coverages, a lot of different pressures. Um, unfortunately, we didn't have a great year, mm -hmm. so to experience that as as the quarterback, uh, to understand that, you know what, it's going to be tough. Um, the NFL is not like college where you just, you know, week to week, you're, you're expecting to win. Um, you know, it is tough when you're here at this level um, and you've gone through six or seven losses in a row. You know, how is your mindset going to be to approach it? Are you going to continue to get better or are you going to focus on what's going on around you? Um, so I think that in itself was a good experience for me. Um, I can't say for other guys what it might be. Um, you, know, you look across the league, other guys have sat and have had success. Other guys have started right away and have had success. So um, I think it really depends on who the player is and, and what they feel is best for them. What kind of spark does Cordero Patterson give this offense? Obviously, he's not back this Sunday, but could be in the near future. He's Again, he's such a great player that um, you need like almost three other players to fit his role. Um, not only does he run the ball really well for us, he can line up, do some things at receiver, um, you know, even blocks well. So it's like he's what he's capable of doing, you know, you almost need like three other players to kind of match that role. And um, so for us, whenever CP does come back, it'll, it'll really help us out. You watching his Instagram stories, like he's ready to go. I can't wait for him to be out here. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. That creates a little excitement for me too. Do you remember him from college too? Like just watching him? CP? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I wasn't on the team that had gone up there and played Tennessee. Um, that was a year before I got there. Um, but yeah, I mean, as a casual fan, absolutely.